الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد In our previous class Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله تعالى He was mentioning some benefits with regards to the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وجعلنا منهم عمة يهدون بأمرنا لما صبروا لما صبروا وكانوا بآياتنا يقنون that we have made from amongst them a'imma yani imams, leaders leaders and role models to be followed guiding by our command whenever they were patient and they had certainty in our signs and they had certainty in our signs and uh, the point in the beginning the author he is making rahimahullah is that which he mentioned فَبِالصَّبْرِ وَالْيَقِينِ تُنَالُ الْإِمَامَةُ فِي الدِّينِ and it is by way of patience and certainty that leadership and authority is obtained in the religion it's by way of patience patience in being steadfast and performing the obligations and establishing them daily in public and in private in the manner proper and required and holding fast to the sunnah and the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and performing those obligations Likewise, patience in avoiding and staying away from the prohibitions entirely and leaving off that which is doubtful likewise. All of this requires great patience, striving against one's soul. And also in dealing with the calamities and the trials and the tests and the challenges of life, the calamities that befall a person sometimes in his wealth or in his, in his health or in his family or in his loved ones, and the likes to be patient in the face of these tragedies and trials, knowing that everything that happens is by the command and the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal and the person he would accept that and he would submit and surrender and he would submit and surrender so this is the patience in this manner so by patience in this manner a person he will obtain, he will, he will obtain leadership whenever it's coupled with certainty and his certainty in the fundamentals of faith and this is what the author he had mentioned previously he has certainty in his belief in Allah he has certainty and belief in the angels, no doubt whatsoever. Certainty in his belief in Allah and Allah's Lordship and that Allah, he has all the most beautiful names and attributes of perfection, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that he alone is worthy of worship. And they have certainty in the angels, in general, that which is mentioned in general, and in detail, that which has been mentioned in detail. And they have certainty in the books and the revelation. And they have certainty that the Quran is the final revelation and that these books are the speech of Allah and they came with guidance. And, and, and they were they, and the, that these that these books were the speech of Allah, and, and they were a revelation, with with guidance. And likewise, they have certainty in the messengers and prophets. All of them, they have no doubts about these affairs. They have no doubts about these affairs. And likewise, no shubha, in them. Likewise, no misunderstandings, no misconceptions, no. no uh, innovated creed with regards to this belief, whether they believe in the manner prescribed, in the manner pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the manner that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they believe in the last day, and they believe in the accountability before Allah azza wa jalla, and they believe in the Jannah, and they believe in the Nar, and they have no doubts about this. And uh, this is the certainty that he's referring to that a person he will believe in these things and that his heart will see these realities and believe in them with certainty just as a person he sees the sun with his eyes and just as he sees the moon with his eyes and he has no doubt that the sun is in the sky and that it's daytime or nighttime and he can see these affairs with his eyes and witness them in the same manner he sees these realities and this belief and this faith in his heart and he witnesses that with his insight and with knowledge and this certainty it comes by way of uh, by way of knowledge and the reality of certainty is that it is tamamul ilm wa kamaluhu is to completion and perfection of knowledge and that comes by studying and seeking knowledge and seeing the evidences time after time time after time from different aspects and different angles learning the proofs and the evidences from the quran and from the sunnah and learning the proofs and evidences likewise in the creation in oneself in one's soul in one's family in one's environment around him in the sky and the heavens and in the animals and the likes to see these signs especially whenever a person he reflects over the signs that he witnesses with his eyes and also reflects along with that and couples that to the signs that have come in the noble quran specifically and the verses of allah that call one to reflect upon these affairs 
whenever they're combined together and a person he realizes them and understands them he will have certainty he would have certainty by the permission of Allah so he's saying in this manner this is how a person he reaches authority and command and he becomes a role model truthfully in the religion he comes he becomes a role model and uh, an imam someone who was followed absolutely in the religion but he is also mentioning now and he, that was the point for mentioning this affair then he's mentioning now what that which we, we were reading that there are also in this verse two other great principles so he mentioned the verse to indicate these first two principles which is the means to obtain authority and leadership in the religion by way of patience and by way of certainty but that authority and that leadership will not be completed in, except with the other two principles that are mentioned in this verse likewise and that is guiding the people and he called the people and teaching the people and uh, that that call and that guidance will be by the command of Allah not by desires and not by whims and not by desires and not by whims. So this is what we are reading. The first two was as sabru wa yaqeen. And in this verse it has arba arba usul. The first two preceded uh, as sabru wa yaqeen. Now we're reading what he's mentioning here at thalith. Hidayatul khalqi wa da'watuhum ila Allah wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The third principle that is found in the, this noble verse is guiding the people. Guiding the people and calling them to Allah and to His Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Guiding the people meaning directing them. The Hidayah, the people of Nara as they mentioned, is two types. Hidayah to Ad-Dilalati wa Irshad wa Hidayah to Ad-Tawfiq. Hidayah to Ad-Tawfiq ila al-Amali, ila al-Ilmi wa al-Amal. So there's two two types of guidance. One of the, is the type of guidance, that's, that's what he's referring to here. One is the type of guidance that he's referring to here, and this is to direct the people and to advise them and to call them and to clarify the truth for them and uh, to warn them from the falsehood and to encourage them and to admonish them and the likes like this. And he's using the Quran and the Sunnah and, and the likes to, to direct the people and guide them and to call them to Allah uh, by uh, clarifying for them the beauty of Islam and the, the beauty of Tawheed and uh, the, the beautiful names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal calling them to Allah to remember his favors and blessings, calling them to Allah to, to to fear him and to obey him and to hope for his reward and fear his punishment, calling them to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to take him as a role model and to prefer his way and to love him, mentioning his beautiful traits. Likewise, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a messenger uh, and, and as a role model, his traits uh, uh, of honesty and truthfulness and courage and bravery and his traits of forbearance and humbleness uh, and the likes uh, so the people will love the messenger as well sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow him so this is the type of guidance being referred to here as for the fact that the hearts accept that call and comply to that call and believe in that and follow it then this is in the hands of Allah then this is in the hands of Allah it's called uh, Hidayatu uh, Tawfiq Hidayatu Tawfiq this is the one in the hands of Allah as for what's being referred to here is to is to, to guide the people Meaning by directing them and advising them and calling them and calling them. He says, قال, قال تعالى, the, the Most High, He says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So He mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the meaning of which is, and who is better in speech? And who has a better statement and word than the one who calls to Allah and He works righteous deeds? And He says that indeed I am from the Muslims. And he says that indeed I am from the Muslims. Woman Ahsanu Qawlan. And if the people of Naras they, they say that this is a, this is a Aristifham. Yani Aristifham Biman and Nafi. This is a question here, but the question is not intended. It's not asking who, and who is better in speech. Not looking for an answer, but rather to clarify that no one is better in speech. And the, and the meaning is La Ahad Ahsana. La Ahad Ahsanu Qawlan. No one is better in speech whatsoever than the one who calls to Allah. And he works righteous deeds. And he says that indeed I am from the Muslims. And he says indeed I am from the Muslims. So the author, he says, قَالَ الْحَسَنُ الْبَصْرِي رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهِ هَذَا حَبِيبُ اللَّهِ هَذَا وَلِيُّ اللَّهِ أَسْلَمَ لِلَّهِ وَعَمِلَ بِطَاعَتِهِ وَدَأَ الْخَلْقَ إِلَيْهِ He mentioned the statement of الْحَسَنُ الْبَصْرِي رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهِ That he said this is the beloved one of Allah. And this person here, referred to in this verse, who is better, meaning no one is better than the one who calls to Allah. No one is better in speech. No one is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah and, and he works righteous deeds. And he says that indeed I am from the Muslims. Had al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah, he says this is the beloved one of Allah. 
This is the one that is beloved to Allah, and this is the wali, the wali of Allah, meaning the one who is the ally of Allah. Likewise, the one whom Allah loves and aids and supports, and he has submitted himself to Allah. He has surrendered himself to Allah, and he worked in the obedience of Allah, and he called, and he called the people, the people to Allah, and he called the people to Allah. So Hassan al-Basri, he, uh, rahimahullah, has understood, and he from this verse here, three affairs. How could a person be from those whom Allah loves, and uh, or how could he be from the awliya of Allah, those who are beloved to Allah? First, he mentioned aslam lillah. He surrendered to Allah Azza wa Jal. He surrendered in obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, and he worked in his obedience and he called the people and he called the people to Allah. So these are the characteristics and traits here that a person he first himself he will surrender and submit to Allah. He will submit to him in Tawheed and then he likewise he will work in his obedience and strive to be upright in the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal, and likewise call others to that. And likewise, calls others to call others to that. So it says, "Rahimahullah, فهذا النوع أفضل أنواع الإنسان وأعلىهم درجة عند الله يوم القيامة." So this type of person here, this is the most virtuous type of uh, of the people. And the most virtuous type of person is in the one who has the highest, the most lofty rank with Allah on the day of resurrection. And and this is and actually the function. Uh, of all of the prophets and messengers. This is what they were upon. All of the prophets and messengers, they were upon this affair here. Surrendering and submitting to Allah and striving in, to work in His obedience and calling the people to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and calling the people to Allah Azza wa Jinn. So they are no doubt the highest of, uh, of, of, of the creation, the best of the people, and the most noble and virtuous of mankind in this life and in the hereafter. And those who are upon their way in that manner, likewise, they will be as well from the most virtuous. So the author he says, "Wahum thaniyatu Allahi Subhanahu min al khasirin." Wahum thaniyatu Allahi, yani al mustathnain, yani mustathnain. They are those whom Allah has made an exception from the losers, and He has made them an exception from the losers. Qala Taala, "Wal asri in al insan la fi khusr illa al ladina amanu wa amiru al salihat wa tawasu bil haq wa tawasu bil sabr." So he mentioned, Rahimahullah, these people here, and if the ones who have surrendered to Allah and they work in His obedience and call the people to Allah Azza wa Jal, those who have the most high and lofty rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter, they are the ones that Allah has exempted or, or He has excused them. He, he has made an exception with regards to them from being from the losers, meaning they're not from the losers. Everybody else besides them is from the losers. And this is what he's saying. And then he mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Wal Asr. And I swear by the time, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَا فِي خُسْرِ That indeed, the human being, he is in loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except for those who believe and work righteous deeds. وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And they cooperate and, and admonish and advise one another with the truth. And likewise, they admonish and advise one another with patience. With patience. So Ibn Qayyim, he says, رَحِمَهَ اللَّهِ فَأَقْسَمَ فَأَقْسَمَ سُبْحَانُهُ عَلَى خُسْرَانِ النَّوْعِ الْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَنْ كَمَّلَ نَفْسَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَالْعَمَلِ الصَّالِحِ وَكَمَّلَ غَيْرَهُ بِوَسِيَّتِهِ لَهُ بِهِمَا وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الشَّافِعِي رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ لَوْ فَكَّرَ النَّاسُ كُلُّهُمْ فِي سُورَةِ الْعَصْرِ لَكَفَتْهُمْ So he says that in this, uh, in this chapter here, Allah the Most High, He has swore that uh, the, the human being in general, is in loss, is in loss, except for those who have completed themselves by way of faith and righteous actions, and then likewise completed others by advising them and calling them to that, and to that, to that iman, and those righteous actions. And he says, and because, and, and because of this, as Shafi'i rahimahullah, he has said that if the people were to ponder, that if the people, all of them, were to ponder over this chapter, the chapter of Al Asr, then it will suffice them. And it will suffice them as an admonishment, as an admonishment and a proof and clarification that uh, that they must strive to obtain knowledge. They must strive to obtain knowledge and sincere faith and implement that and implement that knowledge in their life and likewise be a means to spread that good that they were upon and to help others. And this goes back, all of this is uh, you know, the clarification of how the author he began this advice by supplicating for Allah Adin, Rahimahullah, and asking Allah to make him mm. Mubarakan Aynamakan. 
to make him blessed wherever he may be. So all of this is proceeding from this affair. He made dua for him, and then he's clarifying for him how he can actualize that dua. Mm. And there's a benefit in this likewise. The people of Nadas, they mentioned that, no doubt, uh, a believer, he will supplicate and call on Allah Azza wa Jal. But along with that, he has to take the means. He will not supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal to make him blessed wherever he may be, or to make him from the students of knowledge, or a great uh, scholar and the likes like this, and then sleep all the time and never study and, and never review or never sit in the classes or never memorize anything from the knowledge and the likes like this rather he will make dua for the likes of these affairs and then he will work upon that path and he will couple that uh, supplication and trust and reliance uh, in Allah Azza wa Jalla with application and striving striving to fulfill that striving to, to, to fulfill that so he made dua for him for these affairs and then he's clarifying for him any of these different means uh, of how to actualize that of how to actualize that and the evidence is here from a number of these verses so the chapter of Al-Asr is from those great chapters clarifying the obligation of learning and the importance of seeking knowledge and likewise implementing that knowledge and applying it in one's life and in this manner a person he will rectify himself in this manner a person he will rectify himself this book here is all is very brief and concise but the author, he has summarized so many great principles uh, as if they're a blueprint for a person to abide by point after point in order to be successful. And the first step that here is clarified in these texts that a person, he must seek knowledge, knowledge of the truth, knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal and his names and attributes and knowledge of the path that leads to him in his law and legislation and he had Islam and knowledge of the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his, and his ways and, and, and his laws and that which is upon from creed and belief and from worship and, and from uh, and from manners and conduct in order to to be upon clarity and then to implement that in one's life in this manner a person he'll become upright he'll be con he will be he will be truly considered upon the straight path and then better than that that he after that that that, that after that he will start to help others and he, according to his ability and according to his knowledge according to his circumstance he will start to help others he will start to help others to be upon what he's upon from that goodness. And that doesn't necessarily mean that this person, he's going to be a great scholar. Not everybody can be a, a great scholar. Not everybody who is steadfast on the straight path is, is a great scholar like Sheikh Ibn Baz, Rahimahullah, for example, or Sheikh with Thaymeen. But the person who is on the straight path, he has knowledge. He has knowledge of his faith. He has knowledge of the fundamentals of his religion. And the religion of Al-Islam is so profound that the one who learns that affair and he properly, it will be compared, especially in our days, to the rest of the people as if he's a scholar. As if he's a scholar. If a person were to learn uh, Surah Tarathi, for example, and to learn the fundamentals uh, that are mentioned in the, the likes of Umdad Ahkam, for example. Just the obligations, any of how to live and abide by the deen properly compared to the rest of the mankind, he would be, he would be considered a great scholar. A great scholar. And, he, and he's just fulfilling the fundamentals and foundations of his religion. And this is uh, also an indication of the greatness of al Islam, and that it's a means of rectification of, of the human being, of the human being. So this is how a person, he will be successful. First and foremost, by seeking knowledge and learning, seeking knowledge truthfully for the sake of Allah. Not for the sake of knowledge, but because a person believes that this knowledge is light and revelation and a means to reach the pleasure of Allah. So therefore, he seeks knowledge with this understanding, and that uh, would... Yani be a great means to carry him to implement that knowledge. Whenever he believes that it's revelation, and he believes that it's guidance from Allah and he believes that it's a path that will lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this will be the greatest yani, encouragement also for him to implement that knowledge in his life and to abide by that. And he will leave off everything that he knew before that was contrary to that knowledge. And this is also what he's referring to as well because the opposite of this was the shubha and the shahwa or the ghafla and the Ittiba al hawa, following the desires, following the desires, following the whims, following the lusts, yani, and the likes like this. So whenever the knowledge becomes certain, then he must leave off what he was upon before. He must leave off what he was upon before. This is what, uh, for example, somebody who accepts Islam, somebody who's new into Islam, somebody, for example, an American, an Amer a person in America who accepts Islam, he has to uh, change uh, a great portion of his life. He has to change a great portion of his life. He has to let go of so many things. So many things in, in, in the American customs, 
Yani, no, a creed, no doubt. <laughs> the creed and body first and foremost, but just in his customs and his manners and his conduct and the and the, his words that he chooses <laughs> and his manners and his dealings and the way that he gets his money. All of these things they gotta be they have to be changed. They have to be changed. He has to he has to let go of a lot of things. He has to let go of a lot of things. So this is the case. We understand that part? Mm. It's very clear. But likewise, my point is not that. My point is that likewise, because of the plots of the enemies of Al Islam, likewise those who are born Muslim as well, their 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 creed has been corrupted. Many of them, many of the Muslims, the creed has been corrupted. The manners have been corrupted. The conduct has been corrupted. The understanding of the proper belief has been corrupted. It's been corrupted. Many Muslims they don't understand Islam properly, and they have lots of. Like we say, the new Muslim who accepts Islam, he comes to Islam with baggage, like they say. <laughs> he comes to Islam with baggage, different manners and different ideologies and different things that uh, are contrary to Islam. Likewise, Muslims today, they, any, until now, they're born with this baggage. Any from their customs and their cultures and from their ways. And this country has this custom and that country has this culture. And uh, many of them uh, are in contradiction to Islam. Are in contradiction to Islam. So whether we're a new Muslim or a born Muslim, whenever we learn about these affairs, we have to uh, we have to surrender and submit and let go of those affairs that are contrary, that are contrary to the legislation and to the law of Al-Islam. And then whenever a person does this, this is whenever the, the, any, the Islam will be seen on him. It will affect him and change him. It will affect him and change him. Sibwat Allah. It will be as, as if he's any engulfed in Islam. Islam has, an, has encompassed him. And he now any dahala fit Islami kafa. He entered into Islam entirely. Entirely. Yeah, you let him an udhulufi silmi kafa. And he entered into Islam in entirety. So some of the people before, Yani, they would follow that which they like from the religion and the law and leave off that which they did not like. And leave off that which they did not like. Uh, do you believe in part of the book and disbelieve in another part? Many do you follow a portion of the book and then you don't follow another portion? This is like some people today. This is like some of the Muslims today. They follow, they follow the part of Islam that they like or that they're, 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 that's their customs or their cultures and the part that they don't like, they don't follow that. If they don't like to wear have a beard, they don't follow that part. They don't care who said it. They don't care who said it. But if, if they like another part, they'll follow because the Prophet وسلم, said it. And they'll say, oh, the Prophet said this. Sallallahu he alayhi wa sallam. He also said you're supposed to have a beard. He, uh, the, he also said you have to raise your pants. He also said you have the woman has to cover herself properly. That you should not make tabarruj. And so on and so forth. So we have to enter into Islam in entirety. Not, 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 not any halfway. Not halfway. So this is the case for uh, a new Muslim or an old Muslim. That one, he must always uh, remember this affair. That we are slaves to Allah Azza wa Jalla, and that we're returning to Him. And we have to prepare for that meeting by surrendering and submitting to Him and working in His obedience. And also helping other people upon that way. So the one who ponders on this chapter here, the one who ponders on this chapter here, this will suffice him as an admonition and as a reminder. Everybody else is a loser. Everybody else is a loser. And even, for example, a person, if he... Um, if he uh, if he learned himself and then he applied that himself, he will still be, yani, in uh, in a type of loss until he uh, participates in helping and guiding the others. And he will not truly be a follower of the prophets and messengers, and he will not truly be upon the path of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam until he has a share, until he has a share in helping others upon guidance, until he participates in 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 this yani, in some manner. And this is what he's going to start mentioning now. Rahimahullah. So he says, وَلَا يُكُونُ مِنْ أَتْبَعَ الرُّسُولِ عَلَى الْحَقِيقَةِ إِلَّا مَنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ إِلَّا مَنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا So a person, he will not truly be from the followers of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in reality until he calls to Allah upon insight. Until he calls to Allah upon insight. So he says, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي so he says, uh, Allah the Most High, he says, say to them, say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is my path, I call to Allah. This is my path, I call to Allah. Ala basira, upon insight, upon insight, me and those who follow me, me and those who follow me. This is an amazing verse. 
This is amazing verse. Qul hadihi sabili ad'u ila Allah. Say this is my path. I call to Allah, not to myself. Not to anything else. I'm not calling the people to to gather around me and to praise me and to raise me and, and to make me their leader and to take from me and to and to obey me and to honor me and respect me. Like I call to Allah. I call to Allah. I call to Allah. This is an uh, indication of having ikhlas and sincerity and purity of intention. And likewise, ala basira, upon insight, not upon hawa, not upon desires, not upon whims, not upon cultures, not upon customs, rather upon guidance. And then, then Allah, He says to say, Ana wa man ittaba'ani, me and those who follow me. I call to Allah upon guidance and insight, and likewise those who follow me, call to Allah upon, upon insight. Upon insight. So he says, Rahimahullah, Qawluhu ad'u ilallah. Ad'u ilallah. So the statement of Allah, the, the Most High, uh, I call to Allah, Tafsiru li sabirihi, allati huwa alayha. This is the interpretation of the path that he's upon. Qul hadihi sabiri. Say, this is my path. Say, this is my path. Ad'u ilallah. I call to Allah. So what is his path? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Adu ilallah. Adu ilallah. I call to Allah. So he's saying that this, this, this statement here is clarifying the interpretation, what that means. What is my path? My path is calling to Allah. So he says, فَسَبِيرُ هُوَ سَبِيرُ أَتْبَعِهِ أَدْعَوَةُ إِلَى اللَّهِ So the path of the, of the Prophet وسلم, and the path of his followers is calling to Allah. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَى سَبِيلِهِ So therefore, whoever did not call to Allah, then he is not upon his path. Then he is not upon his path. So a believer, again, doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is the same in, in this. A person, maybe he is calling to Allah and he does not say anything. So sometimes maybe a person, he could call to Allah... Just by his conduct and his manners, just because his dealings, just because of his speech and the way that he that that he works with the people, the people will notice uh, someone who is steadfast and upright upon the straight path. They will notice something different about him, especially in this society. They'll notice something different about him, different about him in his manners and his conduct, and, and, and his dealings and, and the way that he acts and the likes like this. They'll they'll notice that there's something different about him. He's not like the rest of the people. He's going to be considered strange from amongst them. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about them, يعني طوبة للغربة Have glad tidings to the strangers. And the strangers, they're the ones that Allah mentioned in His book. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا They're the ones who are the strangers. They say, Our Lord is Allah. And then they're steadfast and upright in obedience. In obedience. Then these are the ones, they will become strange. They'll be different. And so a person, he's going to, uh, to call to Allah. While the people that are engulfed in sin and in misguidance, then he will... Uh, he will avoid that and stay away from that. If the people are uh, involved in uh, the backbiting and the gatherings, he will remind them or at least turn away from them. And the likes like this. So he's going to be somebody who's calling to Allah. Likewise, maybe he will spread uh, some beneficial websites or invite the people to the class or give them a book or the likes like this or advise them or direct them or remind them. And he, from time to time, this is what is intended from the first of the book, being blessed wherever he may be. Being blessed wherever he may be, reminding the people of Allah in the last day, reminding the people of the noble way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So each one is going to call according to his ability. Not everybody can, can for example, sit in front of the people and uh, and call and teach or, or give the khutbah and the like like this. But this does not mean that he will not call or that he will not have a hand or a share in propagating the deen of Al Islam and clarifying the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not everyone according to his, to his ability. Everyone according to his ability. The first one he calls is his own soul. And likewise, those under his care in his household. Those under his care in his household. So he says, وَقَوْلُهُ عَلَى بَسِيرًا And the statement of Allah uh, upon insight. قَالَ ibn al-A'rabi قَالَ الْبَسِيرَةُ الثَّبَاتُ فِدِّينَ He said here, الْبَسِيرَةُ What is the intent by al-basira? Insight, الثَّبَاتُ فِدِّينَ He said it means الثَّبَاتُ فِدِّينَ You need to be firm in the religion, steadfast. وَقِيلَ الْبَصِيرَةُ الْإِبْرَةُ كَمَا يُقَالُ أَلَيْسَ لَكَ فِي كَذَا بَصِيرَةُ أي إبرة قال الشاعر في الذاهبين الأولين من القرون لنا بصائر So he says uh, another interpretation of the word البصيرة means uh, الإبرة الإبرة is a lesson that one learns from, from reflecting and taking something into consideration and benefiting from that 
pondering and reflecting upon something and benefiting from that. He said, is it not, uh, you say, for example, is there not a, a, a lesson in this? Yani, do, did you not take a lesson from this, a ibrah from this, a basira from this? Did you not learn something from this? And he, uh, this thing that occurred, and he mentioned some lines of poetry. So he says, what tahqiqu al ibratu thamratu al basira. So he says, yani, and what is correct uh, is that the ibra, which is the lesson uh, that that one learns from considering and pondering over something or reflecting, this is the fruit of the insight. This is the fruit of having the insight. He said, فَإِذَا تَبَصَّرَ اِعْتَبَرَ فَمَنْ عُودِ مَنْ عِبْرَةَ فَكَأَنَّهُ لَا بَصِيرَةَ لَهُ And he meaning the one who has insight and reflects, then he will take a lesson and learn from that. And he will take an admonition. He will take an admonition. So he says, so the one who does not learn the, the lesson or take the admonition is as if he has no insight. As if he has no no insight. So he says, وَأَصْلُ اللَّفْضِ مِنَ الظُّهُورِ وَالْبَيَانِ so the the origin of this term, any al basira, is to be is to be is to be shown and to be clear something that is shown apparent and is clear. Fal Quranu basair. So therefore, the Quran is basair. Basair is la prola basira. So basira is interpreted to mean uh, is to mean insight. But what is intended here are proofs. Basair any hujaj, barahin, proofs, proofs and evidences. Proofs in أي أدلة وهدى وبيان يقود إلى الحق meaning that there are evidences. The Quran is بصائر. Any evidences and proofs and clarification that will lead a person to the truth. ويهدي إلى الرشد and that will guide him to the upright path. ولهذا يقال للطريقة من الدم التي يستدل بها على رمية بصيرة. So it says because of this, and it's mentioned that a trail of blood that comes from the game whenever it is shot uh, this trail is called basira because it leads to the game mm -hmm. a person he will shoot the game he's hunting for example an animal if he shot an animal with an arrow for example then uh, sometimes the animal it will continue to run for some time and it will leave a trail of blood behind it and uh, the hunter he will follow that trail until he finds the animal that he shot until he finds the animal that he shot so they will call the trail that he's following basira because it's going to lead him to what he's looking for. It's going to lead him to what he's looking for from the game that he shot. So likewise, the Quran is basira or basair. Yet the evidence is in proofs that guide a person to the right way. That guide a person to the right way. So he says, يعني, فدلت الآية أيضا على أن من لم يكون على بصيرة فليس من أتباع الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وأن أتباعه هم أولو البصائر. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ أَنَا وَمَنِ تَبَعَنِي So he says uh, also that this verse indicates that whoever was not upon insight, upon this basira, upon this guidance and this insight uh, and uh, certainty in the religion, and he from having this uh, guidance and understanding these evidences, then they are not truly from the followers of the Messenger likewise, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, likewise, that his followers truly, they are those people who have insight and guidance. The people of Basair. The people of Basair. Any people of true insight and understanding. And uh, uncertainty in the affairs of the religion. And they have insight. They know the truth. And they follow it. So he says, what he had the qada ana wa man So because of this, Allah, he says, me and those who follow me. This is my path. I call to Allah, me and those who follow me. Me and those who follow me. So Ibn Qayyim, he says, Rahimahullah, فَإِنْ كَانَ الْمَعْنَ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَيَكُونُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي مَعْطُوفًا عَلَى الضَّمِيرِ الْمَرْفُوعِ فِي أَدْعُوا وَحَسُنَ الْأَطْفُ لِأَجْلِ الْفَصْلِ فَهُوَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى أَنَّ أَتْبَعَ الرَّسُولِ عَلَى أَنَّ أَتْبَعَ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم هم الذين يدعون إلى الله وإلى رسوله. وإن كان معطوفا على الضمير المرجو المجرور في سبيلي أي هذه سبيلي والسبيل من اتبعني فكذلك وعلى التقديرين فسبيله وسبيل أتباعه الدعوة إلى الله الدعوة إلى الله. So now Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله is closing this portion here mentioning some linguistic benefits. And how uh, he is interpreting these verses based upon understanding harful adults.
<laughs> uh, we studied the wow in the, in the Arabic language, and the wow has di many different meanings. Wow al alf, wa wow qasam, wa wow hal. There's different wows in the Arabic language, but this one is wow al So, according to which one is uh, the ma'atuf, it's connected, it's going to have uh, any uh, a different meaning slightly. So, this is what he's referring to. So if the, he says, if the meaning was, I call to Allah, me and those who follow me, and the, the then at this time, and those who follow me, is coupled with the pronoun in ad'u, yani ana, ad'u, yani the pronoun, ana, mm -hmm. ad'u ila Allah, yani ana, the damir, it's a damir, mustatir, mm takdiruhu -hmm. ana, mustatir wujuban. So now, uh, and, and those who follow me is coupled with that. So me, I call, and those who follow me. I call to Allah and those who follow me. So, and those who follow me is uh, coupled with I call. Mm. So that means the Prophet Sallallahu calls to Allah and those who follow him call to Allah. So this is the evidence that uh, the followers of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're the ones who call to Allah and his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or we could say that, or, or, he, or he says the that it is uh, it is uh, coupled or ma'atuf upon the pronoun in sabiri, which is also ana. Sabiri, sabiri. sabiri. Ala dhamir al-majroof fi sabiri. Any sabiri, any my path. My path. So therefore he says that sabiri, my path, and the path of those who follow me. Hadihi sabiri. هذه سبيلي. This is my path. هذه سبيلي وهذه سبيلو من تبعني. أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة. So therefore, it's the same meaning in the end. And he basically, basically, it's going to have the same meaning. So both cases, he says, and in both uh, circumstances here, the path, his path, and the path of those who follow him. صلى الله عليه وسلم is to call to Allah. Is to call to Allah. His path and the path of those who follow him. Is to call to Allah. So this verse here, as you see, is the interpretation of the other verse. That's the beginning. What is the beginning? The verse in Sajda. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُ أَعِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا أَدُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا أَدُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ This is this is the same meaning of that. They they're calling they they, they guide by way of our call by by way of our command. And in the meaning they call to Allah. أنا ومن تبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا منا وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين وما أنا من المشركين جزاكم الله خيرا. after this the author he's going to talk about the next uh, the next uh, أصل uh, الأصل الرابع which is the fact that he call, the call those who are truly uh, leaders in the religion uh, what was the first one they have patience and they have certainty and they call to Allah and now the the fourth principle is they call to Allah, <laughs> many who, upon the deen of Allah. They guide the people by the command of Allah, mm -hmm. not by desires. An important point. Some people, they call the people to Allah, and he, so they claim, but in reality, they're calling to innovation, and they're calling to misguidance, and they're calling to deviation, they're calling to their custom, or they're calling to their culture, or they're calling to themselves, or they're calling to their sheikh, or they're calling to any different types of misguidance. So to call to Allah, nam, but to call to Allah by His command. <laughs> by by the command of Allah, meaning by the deen of Allah. Yahduna bi amrina, guiding by our command. By our command. Any bi 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 dinina, bi dinina, by way of our religion. And we take this tomorrow, inshaAllah. Hada wa sallallahu wa ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.